hi guys welcome back to my channel i hope you're all doing well and i hope you're having a lovely start to the new year so today i'm back with a new video and it's actually going to be a case update uh, it's the updated case of andrew gosden i can't quite believe i'm saying that um if you followed andrew's um case and his disappearance i'm sure you'll be as shocked as i am right now um it's been 15 years since he went missing and there was never any sightings of him and no one heard from him after he disappeared so it's um it's really really shocking um i've got quite mixed emotions about it and i just wanted to go through um the case update what's been said by the police and then also my thoughts on it and i'd love to hear what you guys think after as well so two of you guys actually commented this on my video I did. I did a full length video on Andrew Gosden's disappearance. I did that about a year ago. I will link it somewhere here for you to go and watch. So thank you so much for that. Um, when I saw the notification of someone commented on my video, I quite literally froze. Um, I was at work today when I received the comment and I actually couldn't go back to work for about an hour. Obviously I was still working, but like mentally I was like not really there because you know when you've been following a case for so long um it's 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 a real shock to the system when there's with when there's information such as what's come out so i'm going to go ahead and read uh the police statement and a statement that was released by bbc news so the statement says two men aged 38 and 45 were arrested on suspicion of kidnap and human trafficking in London. Both have since been released under investigation. The older man was also arrested on suspicion of possessing indecent images of children. Um, both men were arrested on the 8th of December 2021 with the assistance of officers from the Metropolitan Police. Okay, so obviously that is huge news and obviously they're referring to Andrew. So there's a picture of Andrew, you know, they've been arrested in connection with his disappearance. So unfortunately, um, it, it's about Andrew, basically. It's very, very minimal information. I know obviously um, it's an active investigation, so they can't say much, but, you know, it's, it's quite a, a shocking thing that they said, you know, obviously it's basically involving like predators and you know it's not easy to listen to and there's not much information that follows but you know they've obviously they've obviously got a, a big a good idea of what happened or you know some sort of leads in order to one even take people in and arrest people on suspicion and two to release it to the public so it's got to have quite a lot of credibility Okay, so if you haven't heard of the Andrew Gosden case, um, as I said, I did do a video on it. Um, I will link it up here. It's quite an in-depth in um, video on, on what happened and timeframes and etc. But if you haven't heard of it, I'm just going to give you a brief rundown now just to roughly explain what happened on the day he disappeared. So Andrew Gosden was 14 years old when he decided to take a trip from his home in Doncaster to London King's Cross. This was on the 14th of September. So on that day, he essentially bunked off school. You know, we've all done it. So he, he, he was meant to go to school, but he came home and he basically left the house and he got a one-way ticket from Doncaster Station to London King's Cross Station. But he didn't tell anyone about this that we know of. He didn't tell any friends, any family. So this was all sort of done by himself and was a secret. The fact that he was going to be bunking off school and going to do what he was doing. Obviously, to this day, as he hasn't returned, we don't actually know what it is he was doing. All we have is sort of theories and speculation. So as I said, he bought a one-way ticket. He didn't bring any clothes. He just bought, you know, your essentials for going on a trip. And he also didn't bring his PS4 or PS3 charger. Um he was constantly on that so you know although he bought a one-way ticket which can be seen as a bit odd you know he didn't bring any clothes he didn't bring anything if he was gonna you know um try and go off to a new life you know he just bought his essentials um but we're not too sure why he just bought the one-way ticket as opposed to the the way coming back um maybe he was just maybe he was going to spend the night who knows but you know the fact that he didn't bring a charger for his ps4 kind of says to me that he was planning on coming back he also took 200 pounds with him which you know london's pricey so you know that makes sense obviously he bought money to, to do whatever he was doing um it's it was sort of um 
thought that he was going to a rock concert, you know. Um, so he bumped off school to go to see a rock concert with someone. That is obviously the theory that um, most people have. So he arrives at London King's Cross Station and he's picked up on CCTV. You can find this on Google, um, you know, just CCTV in the station. Um, and after that, CCTV of him is uh, shown. He leaves the station and he's never seen or heard from again. And there was no updates in the whole 15 years that he's been missing. Today, he would be 28 years old. Numerous appeals were made for years and years. Um, Andrew's case was really um, shown in the media. Um, he was actually the main face for the a Missing Persons campaign. And even if you don't know the name An Andrew Gosden when I say it, chances are you're going to know who he is once you see this poster so he is the face of uh, a huge missing persons foundation um this post has been on bus stop since i can remember i remember seeing it when i was like 10 years old it's the the cute little boy with the glasses and the sort of uh, swishy hair that goes to the side so he had a lot of coverage, you know, no one can say, oh, like he wasn't spoken about enough. So there was loads of coverage on his case and these posters are still out there today. I saw one literally a month ago, so it just says a lot about, you know, the investigation and how hard people search for him. But apart from speculation, you know, there's been a few few people saying they've seen, they've seen him and stuff and nothing that's been verified. Um, Nothing else has ever come to light, which is just crazy, you know, nothing else has ever been found of him, no one spoke to him, no one's heard from him. So just based on the statement that was released and my initial thoughts, so just going off my initial thoughts on the statement, so one of the men is 38, so I sort of obviously worked out going back then how old he would have been um, when Andrew went missing and he would have been 23, which I thought quite interesting. Um, one of the biggest theories in Andrew's case is that he communicated with someone online and they made plans to meet in London to go to a rock concert or, you know, hang out or whatever. And this person could have uh, blatantly um, posed as a as a child or, you know, a younger, a younger person when they could have actually just been a predator. So, you know, the fact that this guy was 23 at, back then, you know, obviously it's quite a lot older than Andrew, but it's, it's not like it's like a 40, 50 year old man, you know, and this person, if they were 23, they could have easily looked 18, 17, and they could have easily told Andrew that that was their age, which would have only further gained Andrew's trust. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, obviously, the person involved allegedly um, was in the early 20s when this happened. So I can see how, you know, Andrew could have happily gone to met them if that's what happened because they would have appeared younger they were younger and i think that's quite crucial to to be what's been released today obviously i'm just speculating here guys you know i'm just giving my opinion as someone that's followed the case for a long time but the other thing i thought was interesting is they said that one of the men was involved in human trafficking and you know it didn't specify whether that was sex trafficking or if that was another type of trafficking like a uh, forced labor forced slavery I thought that was quite interesting because I feel like they would have put sex trafficking maybe if it was if it was that but equally they might have just been being vague on it um but you know that was interesting to me and you know just horrifying to think about I mean you think how did this all happen when Andrew went to London how did this happen and you know I, the last thing I sort of expected was human trafficking I obviously I kind of expected that you know, he was preyed upon by a predator and they maybe took him and, you know, caused him harm and then maybe murdered him. Obviously, as morbid as that is, I thought that would have been the case. I never once really thought about human trafficking. Um, obviously, this is a massive issue, as I've, I've spoke about before. Um, but, you know, I don't want to say it's not too bad in England. It's not too bad in London because I'm sure it is. But, you know, that's still quite rare, in my opinion, to happen uh, in London, especially. It's normally more, you know, someone um, has a victim and, you know, murders them within the first 24 hours. That's the most common thing that happens when people go missing, you know. Um, so I, I just thought that, like, that was really interesting. But, yeah, we really need more information on that. Um it's just bizarre. I'm trying to piece it all together, which I know I can't do. Obviously, I don't have the facts. I don't have the information. But um, it's just, you know, it's really interesting to sort of um, reassess what happened to him and sort of match it up with the information we have now, if that makes sense. I guess it, in a way, it's, it's a really good thing that this information has been brought to light. Um, but equally, it doesn't sound like good news for Andrew, unfortunately. But you know, I just I just don't understand how the Gosden family have survived the, for the last 15 years. 
not knowing what's happened to their little boy. You know, he was only 14 when he went missing. And I'm not for any reason saying that someone um, dying or being murdered is any easier. But I've always thought for myself, you know, if someone passes away, someone's murdered, obviously it's absolutely horrendous. It's a tragic thing to go through for the family. But I think you have that small bit of, you know, closure because you know what's happened you can go to their grave you can pay your respects you know but when someone just goes missing and there's no sign of them i think i think in a way it could be worse for the family because they're going to sit there and constantly think what's what could have happened you know they've got all these horrible um scenarios playing through their mind and for just a 14 year old boy a school boy i just can't imagine the pain his parents have gone through in the last 15 years and I can't imagine what pain they're going through now after receiving this update. This case has lived in my head rent-free for probably the last five, seven years. Um, as soon as I was sort of in my in my teen years, I always um, heard about this case. I always recognised the boy on the posters. And when I started getting into true crime, you know, he was one of the first cases that I uh, researched. And it just absolutely baffled me you know so i just can't stress enough if anyone absolutely anyone has any information about what happened to andrew if you saw something if you were in london at the time if back then if you were in your 20s your 30s you know and you saw anything if you saw anything that looked weird or something that could have been to do with andrew then i just pray and hope that you bring it to someone's attention now that we have this added information so it was obviously andrew he was a young boy with brown swishy hair and he had glasses and he would be wearing a slip knot t-shirt and you know he potentially would have been in the company of two much older men in London, King's Cross, 14th of September. So I would urge you to come forward if you have any information whatsoever. I know that's really unlikely because I'm a very small channel, but you know, this did happen in London, which is very close to where I live. And you know, you just never know. I think it's always important to spread that message. If you do have, if you do know anything or anyone's told you anything, then it's not more, now than ever, it's more important to, 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 to say something. Again, thank you to the two people who commented on my video um, regarding the case updates. Um, <laughs> I actually found out about it from you guys and I just had to make this video. Um, so please let me know what you guys think, um, what are your thoughts based on the initial statement from the police, um, what do you think could have happened and yeah, uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care, bye.